In today's video, I'll be spectating some Europa Universalis multiplayer, but not just any multiplayer game. In this game, there's a special rule that if we rehost, every player will be assigned a new nation randomly. Essentially, a version of EU4 musical chairs. To make things more interesting, at the end of every session, there'll be a YouTube video, which is what you're watching right now, where five of the viewers will be chosen, where you will vote who you think performed the best. And at the end of the campaign, the person with the most points will get a hundred dollars. Okay, I know that's not that much money, but you know, it's something and uh, I'm not Mr. Beast, guys. This is what I could do. And there's no sponsor just coming out of pocket. So here we go. Let's get right into the game. The rules, again, I'll say them are very simple. It's a normal EU4 game. It's a normal EU4 game, but when there's a rehost, the players will swap their nations. So people aren't going to be attached to their nation. And we can see how people are going to react in certain things. And that includes if a player is in a player war. So if someone's fighting another player and there's a rehost, the players swap. It's now two different players in the player war. Unless somehow they randomly get the same nation again. Yeah, rip Elon Musk's uh, grandma. If you didn't know, he, she just died. Why did he put a smiley face though? Why did he put a smiley face? The, the fun part about spectating is we can see how players play and we can also talk about MP and we can also talk about what you should do in the start of the game. As you can see, most players are doing the very standard thing of taking out all of the power points. We do have a Ming player. Uh, there are special Ming rules like uh, Ming cannot declare offensive wars or join any wars or fight anyone as long as all of their tributes are play paying tribute. If, uh, if two tributes stop playing paying tribute, then... Um, it will unlo unleash the And main. by the way, we are playing with a multiplayer mod, but it literally only changes the things that you can see right here. It's just a quality of life mod that is meant for multiplayer, but it's as vanilla as a multiplayer mod gets. Pause here if you want to see all the changes. Already had our first player death. It's Uzbek. Is he on the players? Is he an observer? Did he get fully annexed already? Where is Uzbek? Oh, it's this little small nation here. How this happened in the first two years of the game? I have no idea. And then there's a war going on in Italy. Where? What is going on here? Florence is getting ganked. Florence is getting ganked by Milan and Venice. He has an AI Savoy helping him, but this is. That's not a good, let's see, let's see the situation. Florence player, Blade Shot. By the way, we're going to be mentioning a lot of players by their names. Oh, Swiss is, Swiss is now helping Milan, Venice. So it's Milan, Venice, Swiss in this war. Florence just won this war. He's not focusing mill though, which could be quite bad. And he's now, uh, he's now, oh wait, no, it's just Swiss is just attacking Savoy just separately in a separate war because Savoy is AI. But he was able to break them. How much debt is he already in? 14 loans, he can take 15 loans. Gotta be quite, uh, be careful here. He is uh, removing the occupation of Pisa, which will increase his income uh, slightly. Keep in mind though, since he is a duchy, oh no, he didn't give away all his crownlands. Yeah, that's kind of smart. As a duchy, you need to be careful. You will get autonomy quite fast. Oh, the Sweden, the independent war of Sweden has now just gone back into Sweden's favor. Keep in mind, it's Denmark versus Sweden and Norway. Denmark does have some AI allies, though. You see, the Poland player is just doing a normal Poland strategy, you know? Poland just, uh, he's getting ready probably to take Silesia once uh, once Austria is done with Bohemia. Uh, because it is in his trade node. Uh, Silesia is in, the, in his trade node. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's very standard play coming here from the Poland player. Running, he's running a level 4 Diplo Advisor, but, you know, it's going to be probably a lot of deving. Uh, can we see dev clicks? Do we have the dev click button on? We have dev clicks. Uh, we do not have the dev clicks. There's usually sometimes in MP games the mod will have a, a, a decision where you can hover and see your uh, dev clicks. Florence is turning the tide. Blade Shot fighting this 2v1. Can he win it? This will definitely put him into the uh, tide. Oh, and it's an uncon from Denmark to Sweden. I guess he lost the battle or did Denmark just bankrupt? Denmark is close to bankruptcy, it seems. Well, he is fully occupied because he did do an unconditional surrender. Florence is pushed back. Is he going to get stack wiped? Oh, no. That's the Florence army stack wipe. That is sad for Florence. At least he got a stability, though, guys. Vijayanagar Bahamani's war started. This is a pretty normal war in EU4 MP. Like, a uh, couple of wars that you expect to happen in the first session, like, almost guaranteed, is Autumn and Mamluks. You can see both players are kind of chilling. Mamluks just removed... Uh, Moved his uh, maintenance, uh, boost up his maintenance. But Bahman's Vijayanagar is uh, two players. The Vijayanagar player is not 
mobilizing right now. I'm not really sure what's going on here. I hope he knows that he is, in fact, in a war. It's a war you expect. Same with Burgundy and France. But in this MP, uh, the player chose to play uh, Holland instead. Burgundy and Vanilla MP is pain. It is pain. Usually Burgundy gets like some kind of bonuses or it has the ability to integrate its PUs earlier, but not in this because it's like ba basically vanilla. So Holland is a subject of uh, the player is a subject. He needs to now somehow get independence from the AI. Uh, this does make France a little bit stronger because you can see Aragon is a player. Aragon is a player and so is Castile. So maybe we'll see something a little bit different. Uh, the normal we do have a Morocco Tunis combo they kind of are like a counterbalance to the Iberians but there's also Aragon which will make it a little bit harder Ottoman's player isn't going for Byzantium he's probably going for the historic date to get to Byzantium he's truly a LARPer waiting for the historic date to take Constantinople keep in mind as Ottomans getting Constantinople is actually very important because it changes your rank from kingdom to empire um, and also it gives you a lot more income since you will get more of the Constantinople trade node. You pretty much get all of Byzantium's trade share. And Florence is still fighting. He does just turn, turn back the tide again. Again, we're keeping an eye on players. This is Blade Shot. We're going to be, I'm going to be writing here on a document the players that, you know, are impressive. And at the end of the stream and also on the YouTube video, since there will be a YouTube video for each session of this campaign, kind of like how we did for Habibi's Daycare. Um... They, uh, uh, we will, the both Twitch chat and YouTube chat will vote for the impressive players. So keep the player's name in mind because, of course, every time there's a rehost, they'll switch nations. So <laughs> you can't remember them by their player, by their, uh, by their nations. You have to remember them by their names. Blade Shot, if he can win this 2v1, that will be quite impressive. So, yeah, there's a, pl they're going in right now. Uh, Tunis declared war on Aragon. Florence is now kicking back. Blade shot on Florence. He's pushing back. He doesn't really do a lot of diplomacy. You could kind of see that he did that this game. He just attacked Milan without doing any diplomacy and without any warning or anything. Probably because the Milan player snaked to Luca immediately. Not really snaked, but he just attacked for Luca right away. Tunis right now just occupying Aragon player. Aragon player is building up a navy to take on the Tunis Navy. Tunis Navy is no joke. I think they begin with, yeah, 20% galley combat ability, and then they could get another 15 from free oarsmen, so they could have 35 galley combat ability day one, which is quite impressive. And here's the naval battle between Aragon and Tunis. Does Aragon have the free oarsmen? He does. Does he have galley combat ability? He does too. Oh, so he actually has the same galley combat ability. I did not realize that because I've never played Aragon before. Maybe I should play Aragon sometime. And, uh... Aragon has beaten the Tunisian Navy. He now needs to somehow land. Uh, unless he, uh, he can get another 17 war score. I don't think he's actually able to get enough. Yeah, he's actually not able enough to get even a stab bit here. He is going to have to try to occupy more islands or win a naval battle. Otto Mem's war has started? No, Ottomans is in war with Castile. Oh, it's because Castile declared war on Granada, and for some reason... Oh, he's Defender of the Faith. He's Defender of the Faith, that's why. He could white piece that in a year. Editing Habibi here. Actually, Ottoman Memluks did have a war. It was uh, a stab hit in the favor of Ottomans, where he took Halab, the Fort of Halab. Then Ottomans now here declared war on Karaman, which Memluks uh, joined in on since he was allied to Karaman. So it's 1450 and Ottomans Mems are already in their second war. Meanwhile, Blade Shot being pushed back, but he's fighting this 2v1. Definitely going to be in our eyes. Don't die, Blade Shot. We are rooting for you. And the first battle between Ottomans and Mamluks is going on. Ottomans has less morale, but more discipline. It is a morale patch, but, you know, it's not that big of a morale difference there. Hungary is now a player PU under Austria, which is allowed. Making Austria probably one of the strongest players in the game, almost there. But now we have a player PU Hungary that's just chilling. And Austria, probably he told him, hey man, just accept the PU. We'll be allies forever. That's what this PU is. I will integrate you. I promise. I promise. Trust? Trust? That's probably what the Austria player said to Hungary. Despite a stronghold, Florence did end up dying to Milan and was fully annexed. I think, I think if Kegels can manage to beat the Manchu player with nine mandate, that'll definitely put him on the list for top players of the session. I mean, he has 10k more army and 
nine mandates. So I don't think that's happening. We'll have to see. Right now, he's still making positive mandates. Of course, the negative modifiers of mandates. He yeah, has he's just gonna track the war out for like 20 years. Oh, goods produced by his 40. Data. He just has to re uh, hold for the next hour and 10 minutes because that's when the first rehost is happening. Exactly. Then, it, then it's someone else's problem. <laughs> then it's somebody <laughs> else's I mean, problem. <laughs> <laughs> we need to know when we declare a nation they have. Just gonna refuse to pay mandate now. Hey, dude, you might declare war on a nation and then on the rehost, you're the nation that's fighting yourself. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it seems players are focusing on just ruining their nation as fast as possible because they don't get, they're not playing on it permanently. But you know, we'll keep an eye on that. How is this war going? Let's see. Bahman is VJ war. Ooh, a close battle. Bahman is in position to reinforce. He's now getting into the battle, and Vijayanagar doesn't have an ally. He actually chooses to retreat himself. Quite an interesting war here. Vijayanagar in 4k of debt. Bahman is also in 4k of debt. And Ming? Oh, Manchu, we are actually losing. Ming, oh my god. This is so rough for Ming. He's one morale behind. He's overstacking so much. Oh but he's actually gonna win based off of numbers. Okay. Manchu actually has war chest. <laughs> How do you know this? I, you, I looked in the battle and he had plus 10 war. Many of you guys already know what ma mandate is, but basically you use mandate to pass the celestial reforms. And if you have low mandates, you get modifiers that give you debuffs. And if you have positive mandates, you get uh, buffs that uh, your nation gets. They basically go the opposite way. At 50, it stabilizes. But right now, Ming is fighting with minus 39 manpower, minus 39 Merrick manpower, minus 39 goods produced. High in order to for their empire not to fall. And Oirat has now joined in in a separate war against Ming. Ming now needs to somehow maybe make a peace deal on Manchu and then focus their efforts on to uh, Oirat. Oirat player doesn't know well, actually, the forts do have more garrison than vanilla. We did increase the fort garrison. And Ming is engaging. He's going in. Does he have a tech advantage or something? No, it's tech 5 to tech 5. He's going in. It's a 2-5 general. Oh, it's there is a big of a general difference here. He does have a better general over here. Uh, the, the damage. It's actually not as bad as you would think. There's more Ming troops coming in. They're running. He might just win based off of numbers alone. I'm surprised Ming isn't taking more damage. Uh, feels Manchu player is not using enough cav. Why is the Manchu player not using more cav? And Ming actually loses that battle somehow. That is, this is not looking good for Ming. Onman Mamluks were going in the favor of Mamluks. Here we are. Oh, there's also an African war going on. It's Congo versus Mutapa. And Mutapa's losing. He's getting sieged down by Congo. Congo, meanwhile, fighting <laughs> the, the natives in Lenje. Oh, he was able to reconquer uh, Sicily, though. But Naples now declared war on Aragon. What is this madness? And now he's waiting, but he can't beat Navally. Aragon's got a scary navy. 35 galley combat ability. Aragon's holding on here. Doesn't feel good if you're Morocco right now. He needs to hold on for for a year. And the Mamluk Mamluk Ottoman war is over. Ottomans now won a second war against him, and now he's going for Doric Constantinople conquer date. They're still trying. Both players. I think they both might end up dying in each other's arms. The classic 1444. And the Ottoman Mamluks are now in a third war. Is this a truce break? It's a good war to time to go in as Mamluks. But Constantinople is still not taken by the Ottomans. He's going for the historic conquest of Constantinople date, LARPing, and it's actually going to come and bite him in the ass. If he had Constantinople, you'd have almost 30 ducat income right now. He's losing 10 a month because of this, and he is going in 26 loads. Actually, Ottomans might bankrupt soon. That is... Mamluks might bankrupt soon. Both of these players might bankrupt very soon. Mamluks does have slightly higher income and a slightly higher loan cap. He can get interest per annum. I think he has revanchism. Yeah, he does. Oh, that means that he actually has the advantage in this actual war. One versus one. He will bankrupt later. Uh, but he's not reinforcing. He's not reinforcing. You need to reinforce your troops. Oh, there he is. He's just in right in time. And Trebizond with a three-star general. See the books this time. And it looks like a lost battle. And Ming is actually turning the war. 
He's actually turning the war against both Aura and Jin Zhao. Key on Ming, the Ming player. He's now fighting two versus one with six mandates. And somehow he's winning, dude. Against Aura. Are they using enough cav? He's getting stabbed out. The Aura player is actually about to get stabbed out. They need to be using more cav. These, these Horde players need to be using more cav. And you can see even now the Manchu player is using more cav in his stacks. But... You need to have more cap from the beginning and you would have had a better shot at winning this war. But now Moirat is getting stab hitted out. He's running out of diplo po I mean admin points. Can he even stab up? He's actually gonna bankrupt because he's on low stability. Oh, he has no more stability left. Oira is about actually about to bankrupt. Mana's Vigil War is still going on, but it looks so depressing. But Mana's has 3k troops and Vijanagar has well, he just got another Burk sack. Is Bahman is bankrupt? Oh, Bahman is bankrupt. That's why. Being stab hit it out. Oirat. And now it's just Manchu. Vijayanagar be Bahman is. Ming looks like he is one against Oirat. And he's also one against Manchuria. Judas is still fighting. Oh, no. He's won. Oh, he just got Radical Forbes. He's now helping he's against gonna Castile. Navarra. He's gonna, now helping on Castile. But Rezu has won against Aragon. Besides that, there's no other player wars right now. It's quite calm. Oh, just kidding. I go up here. Ottomans ended up bankrupting, and Mamluks were able to get a good peace deal against him. Uh, Manchu, Portugal. No, yeah. This is the only, t like, well, there's the Bah VJ war, but Bah VJ war is pretty much over. There's there's a Castile, there's the Manchu Meng war, but that one's pretty much over. The only big war left right now that's undecided is Castile versus Morocco. Again, keep in mind, well, he's getting stab hitted actually. Keep in mind, Morocco has limited mercs. That's like the downside of Morocco and Vanilla is you have very limited amount of mercs, limited manpower. So one versus one, you should never win, unfortunately, which is why we play MP balance mods that make the one versus one more balanced. Um, but in Vanilla, since this is a Vanilla game, you can see that on a one versus one, Morocco shouldn't win. Tunis has now joined and he's now coming, but that made Portugal join and now Portugal's also in the war. The Aztec player might be a special interest. If he could pass reforms in the next 40 minutes, he's already got two done. Is he getting his third one done? He's from this war. Dude, that's one, two, three. He needs one more vassal. He can get a third reform done. 1457, he's already getting the reforms done. What a player, what a Chad. Not looking good for Morocco. Morocco and Tunis are here. They do have to make a move now. Now's their chance. Morocco's running out of stability. Does he have a stab cost advisor? He doesn't. Does he even have the choice of it? No, he's trying to save money, I guess. Trying not to commit that much. And Ming War is now over. Manchu has unconned to Ming. It has 12 loans and Mandate is going down. Well, it'll go up once the Devastation's dealt with and the Corruption, which are both being dealt with. Oh my god, look at all this Corruption stuff. Oh, ah, ah, Ming moment. Morocco has ended up losing against Castile, but he's not completely dead. He's not dead here. He does have a disaster firing, the Peasants' War. He just needs to get his stability back up and he should be fine. Is Viz going to be okay? Ah, Viz is going to be in a pretty rough position after these wars. Whoever is going to take Viz is going to come on a bankrupt nation. Bahmanis player. There is hope for Bahmanis as... Oh no, he's... Oh, maybe not. Uh, no, no. And Teutonic Order is in a player war. Against Poland and Lithuania? What? Teutonic Order is fighting Poland Lithuania with Hungary. By the way, Hungary is free. Uh, Austria lost the PU as soon as he got it. And now he doesn't have the PUCB. And Austria is also joining. What is this? Oh, no, he's not. He's not. Okay, what? I wasn't seeing this wrong, I guess. Are they helping? I don't even know. But here comes the Hungarians. What is Poland going to do? Poland and Lithuania working together. There's a quite an interesting war. Teutonic Order going on the offensive. What is Brandenburg doing in this time? He's fighting an Omega player war. What? Oh, a coalition. Brandenburg is fighting a coalition war. Oh no, the aggressive expansion. It's going to be interesting who wins this war. It's just right now sieging. He's turning it back. Mutapa turned it back. We haven't been paying attention to him, but he turned back the war against Congo. He has Congo fleeting all the way back to his capital. And he's going for this. Uh, you don't have the numbers. Does he have the tech advantage or something? They're both. Yeah, he does. He's on tech four while Congo is still on tech three. This could be quite bad for the Congo player as some of his army got away. He's got to get that 6k stack wiped and every number counts. Is Congo on the verge of bankruptcy or something? 
Not really. And Mutapa still has gold mine, so he's not really in the worst position. He doesn't own his own land. Separatists hold this land, so he can actually snake around and then let the Separatists do their job. He's gonna go for the army engagement. How far is this guy from Tech 4? He's about to get Tech 4! Does Mutapa know this? I don't think he does. Austria is now committing into this war. It's Teutonic Order, Hungary, Austria versus Poland and Lithuania. Bohemia and Livonian Order are AI vassals, or subjects rather. And Poland Lithuania just won that battle. Poland Lithuania looking like a fierce, fierce uh, group of, uh, of lads. And Muscovy is even helping Lithuania deal with his rebels. That's not something you see every day. Mutapa is now getting pushed back. Where's his army? Wait, where's Mutapa's army? His entire army got stack wiped and we missed it. I'm missing the Africa war. This is clearly European bias. Cancel absolute Habibi. Euro European bias. He's getting stab hit, but right now he's running to the war goal. Which is TT. He's running there. Can he get stab in time? He has ad admin, so I don't think he's going to get stab hit in time. Mutapa needs to defend TT. He had the de uh, defensive advantage. Not looking good. We'll wait and see what the next move is going to be here. Venice now in a player war against Austria. Oh my god, Austria is running down another player. This is the second war. Austria is... Oh my god. The war is still going on between the Teutons. He's going for a cut. Oh, the double battle engagement. This is a top tier EU4 multiplayer action right here. Who's going to win this? Their reinforcements do arrive in... I'm not going to say that one. In the Teutons uh, retreat. They're still fighting in Tuchel though. And another stack's coming. It's another third battle engagement starting in Nanlo. And Nanklo. Oh man, I'm so bad with pronouncing things. Someone's going to get angry. And the Teutons are going to win the battle of Tuchel, which was the most important one. Battle here. The Teutons oh, yeah. are trying to I hold. Mean, Ming is so shit in Vanilla. I got like eight events. Oh, you lose minus two step. Oh, you lose 15 mandates. Manchuria form. You just die. <laughs> Okay, just hold on for another 17 minutes and then it's someone else's problem. They're still holding on their life. This Teutonic Order is alone, one versus two. Maybe this Pickle. Have to Pickle is fighting one versus two. We're definitely going to put Pickle in the list. Pickle's still holding on. Will he hold on in the last 10 minutes before they rehost? It happens and he gets a new nation. Will he keep holding on? We will have to wait and see. Four, white nubby again. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. That's funny. Post Teutonic Order winning this war 2v1. I have no idea. Lithuania, Poland are stab hitting Teutons. Now Muscovy is in the war. Nothing because of inward oh. focus. Ot Ottomans, Ottomans now fighting against QQ. He's out of his bankruptcy, it seems. And he's now fighting QQ. It's a more, huge morale difference, though. Here comes more Ottoman troops. QQ is really committing for this. He really wants to kill the Ottomans, it seems. And Mamluk's just watching the side as his opponent is getting crushed. He's getting ideas, though. Is he getting Tech 6? Oh, Tech 6 is more important. Tech 6 is more important than mill ideas, man. Someone didn't tell him. He doesn't know. Uh, this battle's so close. So close. I think it's going to go for the Ottomans, though. Uh, Oh my god, I actually don't know. Oh, I think it's Ottomans. Ottomans win it. And we actually won't know. There we go. So it's now time for rehost. So believe it or not, U4 multiplayer in its current state is actually quite stable. We played more than 20 years in two hours. So to basically make it this more interesting, I forced a rehost and I randomly selected the player's countries uh, doing some kind of random method. And now everyone's on a new nation. Here's the funniest reswap. The Poland player is now playing on Teutonic Order. Ming player is now playing on Ottomans, who's devastated. He's going into one devastated situation to another devastated situation. Uh, Saucy, who was that, is now playing Ming. So that's just a direct swap. Aztec player is exactly the same. I, I want to see, let him cook. Let the Aztec player cook. There's a couple players that we want to look at. I think the top performers of the first part were Kegels, who's on Ming. He's now on Ottomans. The next is Rezu, who was on Tunis. Did pretty good. Won a war against Aragon. Helped Morocco win a war against Castile. The Rezu now is on uh, Denmark. Let's see if he can recover this Denmark. He's now winning a war against Denmark. He's fighting a war against Denmark and he's winning. Are we against Sweden and winning? And then we have Kit, who is on Austria. 
who was definitely a top performer uh, in the last uh, set, a part of the session. He's now on Congo. A Congo that won a war against Mutapa and it's actually making money and has potential to become an up and coming power. Actually, very close to becoming a GP. Uh, the next is Pickle, who is on Teutonic Order, who's now on Korea. Um, Pickle was on Teutonic Order, now he's on Korea. An another interesting thing is the previous Poland player who was fighting the war against Poland is now Teutons, and he's now the one fighting against his old nation. He's on Teutonic Orders, and he's fighting against Poland. <laughs> okay. And the next player that I think was a highlight was uh, the France player. He actually built a really nice France start. Look at how beautiful this France is. Perfect France opener, perfect France start. He's now on Brandenburg, which is Omega suffering right now. Is it still bankrupt? It's no longer bankrupt. That's the plus side, but he is losing a AI war, but he can win this one. He's got it. As long as he doesn't go in with like full, he can now start. They're, they're, they're now fighting. Let's see, Ottomans, he won that battle against QQ. Oh, and they actually just peaced out. Ottomans, QQ, both players decided, hey, we're on these new nations. Ottomans, is this recoverable? If this player can recover this situation in two hours, I mean, like, that's just deserving. Ki, Ki is definitely deserving of top player of the session. If he's won against Oirat and won two wars against Manchu on zero mandate, he's doing something right now. I don't know what he's doing. Oh, he's decreasing autonomy. That's what that noise is. Yeah. If he can recover this position from where he's at and not die to the Mamluks, who is also in a rough position. Let's see how people are enjoying their new nations. Are you guys enjoying your new nations? No. I'm, just, I'm getting stack one. I'm getting stack one because <laughs> fucking guy beast out separately. <laughs> if, if it took me like two months, I'm getting stack one. This game's bad. I'm just really behind on that. Yeah, recovering this Ottomans is going to be pretty hard. Having this much debt, 27k debt, uh, make it, not having Constantinople, at least he's still Empire rank and also losing a lot of land. What can the player do in this position? I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. Will there be player colonies? Yeah, there should be players colonizing. England it went quality ideas, Portugal went exploration ideas. So Portugal already starting the colonization game. And he's also expanding into into West Africa. Songhai player is probably sweating a little bit right here. Also, Tunis is snaked all the way here. Dude, Tunis was actually played really well. Then the current player is now on Denmark. And he actually reclaimed his land. But he's on the verge of bankruptcy. Oh my god. That's actually so scary for him. This is pain, dude. Imagine coming onto a nation and it looks like this. I feel bad for this guy. Morocco, uh, Muscovy somehow ended up getting stack wiped. His entire army got stack wiped and he ended up giving max money. I believe no war reps though. Yeah, no war reps. Max money to Lithuania. Teutonic Order also ended up accepting the stab hit. He said it was a mistake and he ended up giving max money as well. No uh, war reps though. Meanwhile, Aztec player, we, we kept the Aztec player on this nation. I don't know. Uh, a lot of people don't know how Aztec works. So we're just gonna let him we're not gonna swap Aztecs out until he does all the reforms which surprisingly this player is already doing that you know 1466 he's now this one war he can do another reform and he will be at four reforms he's got three reforms he's got the colonists he's got the discipline he's got the stab cost doing pretty good Castile the Castile Aragon war Aragon is truly suffering feels bad to be Aragon here uh, I don't think he's going to survive this war Sweden now in another war against Muscovy. They decked on Muscovy. Yes, they Sweden attacked Muscovy. That's pretty. That's pretty ballsy. Imperatorius. He was the Castile before. Now he's on Sweden, doing pretty decent here. See if the Muscovy can muster a defense. Both players are on Tech Six. Sweden has three in uh, quality ideas. Muscovy two in defensive ideas. And Muscovy actually has 5.6 morale. He also got. Wait, what? Don't tell me he got... Oh my god, he got the defensive idea event. See? He has a military drill, which is the idea. And then he also has relentless drill, which is the event that is associated with defensive ideas. He has 5.6 morale to Sweden's 4.18. Can his discipline and his infantry combat ability carry him? We'll have to see. Muscovy also has another mercenary stack in the back row. Let's see if he's going to be able to win this. I think the it's 1-4 to a 6-3. Uh, uh, pretty close generals for this age. But later on in the game, definitely the 6-3 is better. But in this stage, 
It's not bad. He just integrated a vassal too as we're talking. And this is not looking good for Sweden. He's doing more casualties, but the morale, 1.5 morale difference. There's just really hard to win in the current state of EU4. And we are on a morale patch, if you did not know. Morale is very, very good. You win all the battles, and even though you lose more troops, you win the war because you win all the battles. That is it. Aragon has lost to Castile, and he's now looking very, very small. Lost the war against Naples, lost the war against Tunis, and now lost the war against Castile. Meanwhile, in Africa, Congo seems to be recovering quite nicely. He does need to catch up in techs. Still in admin tech 3, need to focus admin, which is what he's doing. He did roll a 655 Garcia Lucchini. He has to wait 15 years before he can abdicate, though. Um, but for now, he's 162. That's pretty bad. Nine points total. Uh, but, you know, you can recover eventually with the 655. He does now have the gold mines here. So as long as he decreases the autonomy over here, he can increase his income pretty heavily. Uh, speaking of autonomy, the provinces are eh, not bad. They're just not devved up yet, which is normal. And this is not even in a state yet. So Fala is not in a state. And Ottomans gave up to Venice. Probably the best bet, honestly. Get uh, more revanchism. But he's now about to bankrupt. This is really rough. And I actually feel bad for the player playing it. This is the sad part of these nation swaps. It's just some guy just gets on a, like an absolutely devastated country. Muscovy Sweden war it looks really rough for Sweden he probably thought he could do it because Muscovy had like no troops rough position for him both players losing about the same amount of income but keep in mind that Muscovy can take more loans because he has higher income and Ottomans is now in another war this time against Mamluks he's the one that attacked it he's like all right this is my one shot one opportunity one chance Mamluks also in a lot of debt actually he is actually in a lot a lot of debt Ottomans player in max loans. He knows how much he's losing. He's got all of the modifiers he can get. 3.56 morale, 120-22 discipline. He did trigger discipline event, which will expire in six years. So he just fired it. Mamluk's coming up here with 3.6 morale, no discipline. So it's a 20 discipline advantage for the Ottomans. Ottomans player does have tech six and quality ideas three away from finishing it. Mamluk's only two in quality ideas and now has to take tech six in order to win this war. Ottomans player going for it. This is what I like to see. You know, you're in a dire situation. You can't just sit here and just cope about you having a bad nation. You got to take the what you can do. As Ottomans is a great power, he can see, okay, you know, click on Mamluks. Okay, this guy is also in a lot of debt. This is my chance. Time to go now while I have revanchism. Revanchism gives an insane amount of manpower recovery speed. If you don't know what revanchism is, it's basically a mechanic that when you're losing wars, you get a bunch of bonuses. And since he is now at 89% revanchism, he has 44% tax, 44% manpower recovery speed, and almost a full interest per annum. Will Ethiopia step up and declare war on Mamluks? We will have to wait and see. Frankfurt in a player war. What? Frankfurt in a player war against Bavaria, and he's losing. The Bavaria player decides that he wants to end the life of uh frankfurt sadly bavaria doesn't really have the best military ideas and since he did form a german formable he can't form any of the other german formables like hanover or westphalia which have better ideas or even prussia he cannot because he formed bavaria of course when your land shoots forming bavaria it lets you integrate all of the bavarians for free so it is a trade-off it's like do i want to have all this land for free right now or do i want to greed and wait for better ideas of course, Frankfurt still has informed Westphalia, so he also doesn't have the best ideas. He he actually has nothing military related, while Bavaria has cav combat ability, but I don't think any of his army is cav. He has one cav. And right now you can see him taking some loans. This was the Shimizu player. He's now in Bavaria ending. Speaking of Shimizu, let's go take a quick look at Japan. I never actually looked and see the Japan. Japan star is pretty slowing MP. Um, you know, we don't slot two players in Japan because if it was, it would be incredibly cope and the players would just always die to Korea. At least this way, when you're not a, when you are one player, you can focus on defending. Uh, you can focus on expanding and then de defend the Isles against Korea if Korea decides that he wants to do anything. And Korea, which was the previous Teutonic Order player, probably is going to click Inward Focus and max out Inward Perfection. Oh, he's not actually doing Inward Perfection. He could do that and just keep deving insane amounts. He did actually expand into the Corpse of Manchu, uh, which he is now coring. So probably isn't smart to click Inward Focus just yet. After you annex that, then you click Inward Focus and get some juicy construction cost. 
and dev cost. Yeah, this is true. Someone in chat said there's no point in the in like delaying your Bavaria because you know you need to use your power spike while you have it so you can keep living. Because the most important thing as players here is that you want to keep living. You know, you get dealt a bad hand, you need to figure out a way either through diplomacy or whatever to try to recover. And speaking of that, it seems the Ottomans did just lose a battle against the Mamluk, so not looking really the best situation. Both players in a really rough spot. He did just stab up and lose a stab at the same time. That's interesting to see. He does have a sale of titles that will give him another 400 ducats. He's getting his money troops. Oh, look, he can take more loans. He can actually take three more loans. Both players are on max loans. What? Hey, this guy is so close to bankrupting. He needs to start taking... Uh, uh, Ottomans might actually win this war. Ottomans might actually win this war. This is key, dude. Winning as Ming with no mandate and now actually going to probably win against this Mamluks. Let's let's speaking of Ming, uh, we're going to see Ottomans win this battle. Speaking of Ming, what is the economic situation of Ming? Still zero mandates, losing one mandate a month. Oh, oh he lost a lot of income. Oh, he bankrupted. Oh, he bankrupted. Ming bankrupted. Oh, zero mandate. Are the players going to take advantage of that? Keep in mind, Lan Zhang is a player. Oirat is a player. Korea is a player. Uh, Ava is a player. Is anyone going to deck on this bankrupt Ming? Uh, Mamluk's player is trying to go for some desperation plays here. At max corruption. Trying to get stack wipes on Ottomans. Will the Ottoman player get stack wiped here? He's noticing. Is the province scorched? It is not scorched. So he has to try to there. He's trying to remove the troops off of Damascus so he can go to Trablus and try to reinforce in time. The Ottomans do still have their discipline event. And he's actually getting off the siege of Damascus because winning this battle is more important to him than the siege. He actually didn't have to do that, but you know, you never know, and it's better to not be greedy. And Muscovy did end up winning against Sweden. Sweden lost all of Finland. That is now a vassal of Muscovy. Muscovy definitely looking like a very scary, very scary and strong nation. Still eyes on Ottomans. How's Teutonic Order player doing? This was the previous Poland. He's just chilling. I think he's just building up right now. I think he's just trying to avoid war. Try not to die. Tunis turned the war against Songhai. He did just lose a battle and he is about to get 3k stack wiped. But he does have positive war score and it, was, it is looking good for him. He's probably going to have to take loans again and do uh, more mercs. He hasn't taken that many loans yet, so it's not too bad to do that. He probably snaked the gold mines off of this. Tunis with the er, with the gold mine early is quite strong. Ottomans still pushing forward now in Palestine. 331 troops. Oh. 331 ducat income. No more corruption. He can take no more. Can he sell titles? No titles that he can sell because he has rebels in his land. Oof. And this is now looking quite rough if you are Mamluks. Maybe you can get someone to deck on Ottomans, but I'm not sure who can deck on Ottomans. And it's actually Hungary who attacks Venice. It's a war between... Wait, what is this war? It's Milan versus Venice. Ma Milan, Hungary are ganking Venice. Dude, Ottomans could, after this war, go and truce break... Can go and truce break the Venice player. It's going to cost him admin, which he doesn't really have a lot of, though. That's the one challenge that he has to deal with. But you could reclaim his land, or you could use the time to bankrupt since Mamluks are going to bankrupt too. You feel good about this Ottomans now? I can fix it if Austria and Venice don't cut me to that. Funny how Ming and Venice, I mean uh, Venice and Milan made like a deal and then the players swapped and the Venice and Milan swapped. Uh, okay, they, I gotta they... expand somewhere. <laughs> that's that's the thing about it. That's what I'm thinking that this game is all about. Swapping players, swapping diplomacy. Hug boxes never form. Yeah. Big Ottomans, I'm scared. Hungary don't commit too hard to the Venezuela. Ottomans are back. Ottomans are back. He still has has to bankrupt at some point. There's no way this is recoverable economically. Oh, he just bankrupted. That's actually quite smart. Will people notice that he's bankrupted? If not, this is actually recoverable Ottomans. And that's a great point. Ganking is very dangerous. Like, people are gonna gank, you know? This is a standard of EU4 MP, you know? There's no EU4 MP without ganking. It's just uh, the nature of it if, you know, you have to uh, accept it. Even me, when I first started EU4 MP, I would always take it personally when I'm getting ganked. I'll be like, what? These guys are ganking me. But it's just like a, it's just like a sign that the person is afraid that they'll lose if they 1v1 you. 
So ganking is going to happen. But it is dangerous to gank. Because what happens if you gank someone and then the swaps happen, the person survives, the swap happens and then you're next to him and he's a giga strong nation and you're weak, he's going to attack you and try to kill you. The player Brunei is helping Ayutaya. Can the Ayutaya, this player, if Ayutaya wins this war, it's actually commendable by him because he did make a pretty strong Ethiopia. Let's take a quick look and look at the player map mode here. World is filling up pretty fast. What is this? Poland is under PU of Lithuania. Wait, what? This is allowed by the rules, by the way. But that's just funny to see, dude. Definitely an uncommon wealth. And let's take a quick look at the GP list. It's Ming, who's now AI. Player gave up on the nation and gave up on this lobby. We let it be AI. So the first player right now is France. The Ethiopian player has decided and he's expanding into the Mamluks. Um, thank you for the sub. But yeah, it's right now Ayutaya and Brunei are fighting against Lanzang and Ava. This is good thank if you're you Malika. This ended up winning and he did do what I said. He snaked to the gold mine. Now he just needs to make sure he doesn't fall too behind an admin. And he's actually doing really good on admin. Mana generation on point from this Tudis player. And Denmark now out of bankruptcy. What is this going to be his first move? What is Denmark going to be his move out of bankruptcy? Uh, he took a loan already. But if he can somehow expand into HRE. I think he's actually small enough to join the HRE. <gasps> he is. Should we tell him chat? Ottomans did end up losing some land to QQ. This QQ is actually looking quite scary. But he actually didn't lose much. Did he lose money? He didn't even lose money. Wow. Oh, actually maybe he took max monies from him. And he didn't take war reps. So Ottomans is actually not in that bad a position. He is three years away from ending bankruptcy. A little bit less than three years. And he's back to zero stab. Needs to catch up on admin tech though. He is finishing quality ideas, which is quite nice. Has that manpower recovery speed. Not bad. This Bavaria is Omega big fighting coalition war. Gonna look really rough for him. Maybe he can do a stab hit on the, the player Swiss, but it's looking really rough. 40k troops on one side. Utaya is still death warring Lan Zhang and Ava. How was the money situation? Actually, not as bad as I thought, really. Let's ask the Teutons if he has any, uh, if he's gonna ask anyone for help. Let's go find him. This is my fellow Lebanese friend, Bent Fork. He was playing on Poland, now he's playing on here. If he just holds this war for the next hour, he lives, right? Uh, is Bent Fork like gonna ask for right help? Now. Is anyone gonna help Bent Fork in the 3v1? I told him I can help, but he refused to help. What? I'm currently dying to a coalition. He said he can 1v3 them. What? Yeah, ask Nabi. <laughs> it's not 3, it's, it's 2 maybe. Poland is not helping. Oh, Poland, Poland is, is not helping. Oh, po your own nation is not fighting you. Yeah. It is <laughs> My own nation doesn't want to be 3. It exactly. acknowledges it's 3 of the ruler, but now I think I need help. I'm starting to lose. Oh, this Holland expanded so much. Oh my god. The only thing that can save you here is a discipline event. What? Wait. Oh my god. Wait, how did the... he win? <laughs> Poland was, was trolling me. He wants to go free. So I told him, you know, punish Poland and give me his land. <laughs> okay, it didn't work. Poland, <laughs> Poland, is, Poland is independent. <laughs> No, he's oh. taking independence. Nice. What? Oh my god. He won the 3v1 and now Poland and Lithuania are fighting each other. Oh my god, what? Oh. <laughs> do we want the Prussian or the Catholic side? Which one do we want? Yeah. Oh yeah. my. <laughs> Dude, Dude no. finally. This war is still going. I feel like it's going to go the entire session. The Southeast Asia War, Ayutthaya, Brunei versus Lanzang and Ava. Bengal said he's not going to get involved, so this is it for the war. Uh, but he needs to somehow turn the tide of the war. How is the debt situation? 19 out of 36, that's kind of dire. 18 out of 68, oof. This is really dire for Ayutthaya, not looking uh, good for him. Ottomans still recovering, no one's punishing this Ottomans. And it was actually Venice who ended up losing land. He ended up not dying to Austria, by the way. Not sure how that happened. And the Polish Hungary hug box, they've they turned the tide. Lithuania is actually moments away from bankrupting. He's got okay, he took max loans, he still has corruption to take. What's Poland's economic situation? Not as bad, but still pretty bad. You know who ends up the winner from all of this? It's the Teutonic Order, guys. Who's making a positive balance? Look at that income. That's actually pretty good for 1476. 
And now Poland is winning his war against Lithuania. And Venice is fighting Naples now. Venice is going from war to war. Who decked this war, actually? It was Venice who decided it was time to go. Venice should have a pretty good income. Yeah, probably one of the highest incomes in the game. 57 ducats right now on Venice. Really high, actually. And it's Naples that's going in. Maybe Ottomans helps Naples to reclaim Greece. Maybe. I don't know if he's going to make that move. And it's actually Sorry, Lithuania that dies here. It's Lithuania that dies here. And it's Poland and Teutonic Order that come out top and probably Muscovy. And speaking, someone said, isn't Timurid's Omega strong? M Timurid's at 50 income. He's got 66 max manpower. Pretty strong nation. Another big battle here. But yeah, Ottoman's still recovering. It's pretty good. Needs to get rid of these pretender rebels over here, though. And Venice versus uh, Naples. Venice has the quality advantage. How did he not get that fort? Wasn't that 49%? Unlucky for the Venice player. But here you go. Naples is coming in with more troops. He's still got another 18k in the back row. Another actually 26k in the back row. But uh, Venice still has another 20k and has the quality advantage. Minus one roll. Bad rolls for the Venice player. We can see, oh, another 8k coming in for Venice. Venice really committing here. Really wants to win the Italy Rumble. There was four players in India. Now there's two. And it seems like... Ooh, Venice is going to come out on top, I think. Yeah, Naples is now shattering. Really close battle. But the quality is slightly in Venice's favor, not in Naples' favor. And he's fighting. So now this 2v1, this 2v1, uh, Bengal 2v1 is now a 1v1. And he just probably did some diplomacy. He's like, hey, Timurids, now's your time to expand into India. So he only has to fight one person, which is the Vijayanagar. And Delhi is now fighting against Timurids. As you can see, both players are actually allied to each other. So there was definitely some diplomacy done here. Definitely some diplomacy done here. And diplomacy, you know, it's a skill. It's a skill, you know, being able to convince people to do things. It's a skill. Maybe it was a noob whisper. Who knows? But Delhi is now going. He's running here. He sees no Timurids troops because Timurids is just chilling. He's not pushing, but now Timrids is going the front line, and it's Delhi running to Bengal side because Vijayanagar is probably like, dude, I need help. Help me. Help me. Look at this Holland, dude. Determination is determined. Manchu and now Holland. Uh, Manchu, he could have done better. He just needed more cav. Holland, though, he's expanding. Is he not getting AE? He has a mega AE, but no coalitions forming because probably the co AI coalition is broken. Probably from all the players who uh, who took a lot of aggressive expansion. Is that a PU? Bavaria is under PU of Austria. That's kind of funny. Well, Venice is enforcing on Naples, so Naples has died. Avo, the previous Lithuania player, probably looking at his last nation in Lithuania and seeing it smushed between Muscovy and Poland. He's like, I'm glad I'm off that train wreck. This is the last player war right now. All Everyone else is not in a player war. The India Rumble is going on. Uh, Timurids pushing Delhi from the north. It's a 2v2 Bengal and Timurids versus Delhi and Vijayanagar. Bengal now going to take this one. Going full quality ideas. I see a lot of people going for quality ideas. It is vanilla idea set, so a lot of people probably going to do quality economic. It's still a really good combination. Not only do you get some nice bonuses for income and economic, there is no construction cost or dev cost in it, but there is a merchant. There is 10 goods produced in it. There is production efficiency in it. There is dev for manufacturers in it. There is land uh, maintenance and interest per annum. So it's still pretty good ideas. Um, uh, it's not as good as it used to be, uh, but it's still pretty good. And of course, with quality ideas, you still get the five discipline. So with quality economic, you still get 10 discipline total, which is the most discipline that you can get from two idea sets. And that was a pretty nice backwipe right there. Ottomans on the up and up. I think in terms of QQ economy, he's doing better, but even manpower. Yeah, they're pretty comparable nations, Ottomans and QQ. Ottomans might have to give up on European expansion and just focus on Middle East expansion. Keep in mind, Mamluks is dead. Uh, QQ is pretty strong, a lot of manpower, but income is actually suffering. Um, and uh, Timurids is more focused on India expansion than expansion into the Middle East. So it could be quite good for whoever gets Ottomans next. You can see here they're taking the battle. It's 5 morale on Delhi to 4.3 morale. You can see here it's same discipline. The morale, though, is going to probably carry... 
defensive ideas coming in the clutch. We see some people going defensive instead of quality. Timurids right now on quantity ideas. No ideas though. That is a bit suffering. 636 ruler though should be quite fast to regain it. Needs higher level advisors. And Delhi just pushed back there. And Bengal is continuing his push into Vijayanagar. So quite interesting seeing this war from multiple angles. See even B uh, Bengal is going into economics. So it is a quality economic combo as I was talking about. He's about to unlock that juicy 10 dev cost. Not really the best for fighting a player war, right? <laughs> Korea, definitely one of the strongest nations in EU4 in the current patch. Not a lot of people know this, but this nation's actually Omega right now. You get an Omega ruler and you get a bunch of dev costs really early, so you can just spend the early game just deving and you will be really strong. Yeah, look at this Korea. Almost 70 ducat income in 1479 in vanilla. Defensive core ideas is what he went for here, which gives morale damage received minus 10. That's actually quite good. And Shimizu owns all of Japan uh, through being the Shogun, but I don't know if this was the right play. He's right now the Shogun of Japan. Does give him Kingdom rank. But I don't know. Now, look at this Trajan. Even though his ally is not as committing as much as him. Now you can see Timurid's trying to go back to Delhi. Even though his ally is not committing as much of him in this war, he's now is turning back the war. Not that much in debt, 7 loans compared to 13 loans of Vijayanagar and the 22 loans of Delhi. Delhi really committing here. Timurids are finally committing in this war. Pushing back Delhi. And Bengal is fighting here against Vijayanagar. I think actually Delhi might win these battles though. Timurids is using a really good general though. but. This Delhi has stacked so much morale. Ooh, actually, you know what? Maybe Timurids are going to win that. The rolls are going in his favor. 7-1 to one on shock. 6-7 to seven, though on fire. More troops coming in. And I think Timurids got this battle. And I think also Bengals got this battle. The thing is, neither... This war is probably not going to end by the end of the session. So someone's going to have to come back on Vijayanagar and Delhi and figure the situation out. And it's actually Venice that decks on Austria... You know, this Lithuania player, the Avo, who is Lithuania and Venice, is no joke. He really brought this, uh, really brought this, uh, Venice out from the blue. His, his play on, his play on, uh, on Lithuania wasn't the best, but let's be honest, Vanilla Lithuania is actually pained. You're stuck at duchy rank and you have, like, almost all of your nation is not accepted cultures. And you can't even fix it, um, in the early game. So there's not really much you can do on Lithuania. But definitely a shout out to Avo. Oh, and the the Denmark to Swiss. Maybe Denmark. Actually, you know what? I actually want to put Rezu on here. He built a nice Tunis. It did end up dying to Ottomans. And now there's this a bunch of clear land for Portugal to expand to. Portugal can expand in all of this and become Omega. Uh, but uh, I actually want to put him. He's now one. This is going to be if you. But before we could see the end of the Swedish-Danish war, it was the end of the session. Which means in the next session, which is going to be streamed, this coming Tuesday, the, all of these players will be on brand new nations. What did you guys think of this casting style video? I know it's not the usual content. If you didn't like it, there will be no other uh, normal videos coming out very soon. Uh, but this is something that I will be doing weekly for the next couple of weeks. And for the top five players, these are the ones that we decided on uh, on my Twitch. Uh, please go ahead and vote in the polls, uh, the YouTube polls, so we can determine who is the best player of the session. There will be a ranking system and points given out from 1 to 5. Poll will be in the tagged comment below. Check out the stream on Tuesdays if you want to watch this live and interact with me live. And also check out my Patreon. All of that will be in the description and I'll see you guys in the next video.